Hey guys, Zeramus555 here coming to you guys with the much awaited Dino Mist Car Curry combo video. Um, <clears throat> this is a really weird way for me to be doing this video, but uh, sorry for the ticking in the background too. I got some food cooking. Um, basically, I have the camera pointed uh, this way, not the other way. Like I'm sitting direct, like downwards. Um, the reason for this is that the tripod's kind of in the way. I tried it the other way and it's just kind of awkward, so I didn't want to bump it. So I figured this would be the best way to do it. Um, I'm not going to do any pauses in this video. I'm just going to, in the uh, description down below, um, name where each combo is. Um, so you guys can get Ow! Sorry about that, guys. Everybody's still alive. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to keep that in the video because it's kind of funny and it'll probably make some people jump. Um, <laughs> anyways, my uh, camera actually fell out of the stand there, so hopefully that's good. <clears throat> this is a new device I'm using, so... Um, anyways, yeah, so uh, basically I'm just going to go through the um, combos and uh, I, I'm not going to pause it or anything because it's a pain. I'm just going to keep recording and down below in the description I will have the... Um, uh, I guess the word is what annotation or whatever for for you to click on uh, the timestamp I should say uh, for you to click on and that will bring you to whatever combo that you preferably want to look at. Um, so before I start, I just want to say um, as well that uh, let's get this to uh, 50 likes. Shouldn't be any problem. I did 60 in the last one just to give me time to do this, um, <clears throat> but I think 50 likes should be no problem whatsoever. And uh, with that, I will have the um, the Buster, or sorry, Blackluster Soldier uh, deck profile that you guys have been waiting for. Um, so, anyways, without further ado, let's get on with the combo. So, the first combo I'm going to be showing you guys is the plus two combo I mentioned. So, this is a two card combo. Um, it does uh, require your opponent to open up with a uh, card in their hand. Or sorry, a monster on their field. I'm thinking of a different combo. Um, and this this is just because of uh, you're going to be searching out Brachion. He does require your opponent to have a monster in a face-up attack position. Or a fence position, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be face-up so it, this card can know that it has attack. So basically what you do is you, um, you're you going to open these two cards. And you're going to activate the Dynamis Charge. And then you're going to search out the Brachion. Uh, you're then going to special summon the Brachion. Let's want to check some really quick here. I'm going to put this down here a little more. Looks pretty good. Yeah, bit of a glare, but that's okay. <clears throat> um, you're going to special summon the Brachion, and then you're going to normal summon the Nishipachi. Now, at this point here, um, the Nishipachi's effect can switch itself. Um, or you can, of course, target your opponent's monster and switch it, which can be really good, actually. You can do some more damage to them that way. Um, so then at that point, you're gonna, you are going to Synchro Summon, and you're going to special summon the Bredo. So how this chain link works is uh, essentially um, this is going to be uh, chain link uh, one and this is going to be chain link two. So this will resolve first since this is mandatory. This is, uh, I believe, optional special summon. Pretty sure it is. Yes, it is. Um, the draw is mandatory, but the, the special summon is optional. Um, so then at that point there, you're going to basically um, just uh, special summon your second copy of uh, Nishipachi from the deck. This will activate in a separate chain. And then this one is going to resolve and then add the Brachion back to your hand. So we'll say this is your hand right here. So now at this point here, uh, in a separate chain, the Nishipachi's effect is going to activate, and you're going to draw one extra card. So we start off with one, two cards, and we actually end with uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I guess it's a plus three combo, because um, you do have the card back, but I mean, essentially, it's it's still really, really good, like, if you open this combo. That's the only reason I actually play one Brachion, is I think this card's actually not very good, but if I can get this combo off, it's just a really good, um, you know, situation. I mean, in some cases as well, of course, if you do add this uh, back to your hand off of the, or when you do add this back to your hand off the charge, um, say you draw into another, uh, like a, another Dino Miss and it's a Pendulum Scale 3. You can then activate your scales, <clears throat> and then you have a 3 and 6, and you can, do, you can actually continue your combos, um, because you actually haven't even Pendulum Summoned yet. So if you have other monsters in your hand, plus those uh, cards that you drew, you know, you can start Pendulum Summoning monsters, and you can continue your combos. So it's, it's really important to remember that. Um, so this, this, is a, this is a really, sorry, this is a really good combo uh, going second. Uh, going first, it's not obviously optimal whatsoever, but it's a really good turn to combo. So uh, definitely if you open these two cards, just remember that you can make that play and it's actually quite relevant. Um, so the next combo I'm going to talk about isn't actually a Karakuri combo, it's just a uh, 
regular Dynamist combo, and this this is something a lot of people I'm sure know from playing Dynamist, is that if you have two Dynamist charges up, and you have two scales activated, so we'll say we have Terran and we have the Rex activated. I'm gonna get these cards out of the way here. Um, basically, what happens in this situation is if your opponent waveringizes you, or if you waveringize yourself. So there's waveringize. What actually happens here is um, it's not a uh, plus one, um, but you essentially uh, will add back both scales. So these cards are Dynamus charge is mandatory. It has to resolve. It has to add a Dynamus card back to your hand. So whatever the first Dynamus is that goes to your uh, face up to your pendulum or sorry your extra deck each turn, that card will go back to your hand. You don't have a choice. So um, a lot of times with the synchro plays, you have to make sure that whatever card that you're synchroing with, you know that card. Say this is on the board. Uh, say both these are on the board. Whatever um, card that you're going to be synchroing with, uh, that monster will go back to your hand first. So say you want the, the Terran back to your hand next turn, it's better to synchro with him because this is going to activate both of these, and then this is going to go back to your hand. <clears throat> and then the other one it won't be able to activate again this turn because they both did activate. It's just the second one won't be able to grab it because the first one grabbed it uh, before the second one could. So back to this combo here. Um, essentially what happens is like if you activate Wavering Eyes, um, this card is destroying two Pendulum Zones at the exact same time. So um, on resolution, this card will destroy both these Pendulum Zones. And the first thing that happens is you're going to add back the Pendulum Monster, uh, or sorry, add a Pendulum Monster from your deck to your hand. So you can grab like whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, and then essentially what happens is these will activate Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, or Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, doesn't matter. And um, then both of these cards will go back to your hand. So then at that point there, a, um, like if you have two char charges up and you want to get rid of your pendulum scales, it's actually a really good play because it refills your hand. <clears throat> you can get your scales back in your hand. You can search out what other opposite scale you want. And then what other uh, monster you want to summon um, can become the... So say I want to summon out the, the Rex now and I wanted to uh, still put this in the pendulum zone. That means off the Wavering Eyes now I can search out a, another six scale. Uh, such as Brachion off of the Wavering Eyes, and then I can activate that instead, and now I can Pendulum Summon the Rex. So it's a good way to get like stuff out of your... I mean, it does require you to have two charges, but it's a good way to get your um, Dynamis cards out of circulation uh, on your Pendulum Zone and back into your hand. And of course, the cool thing about this deck as well is with the Pendulum effects, um, these are always like stopping uh, destruction or they're negating targeting effects. Meaning that whatever the first thing is to negate in the turn, that card's going to go back to your hand. And then you can, of course, play different uh, cards in your Pendulum Zones to get around that. So just remember that if you have two charges up, um, a lot of people do forget it. This card is mandatory. So if you do have uh, two charges up, um, you only get to add one, no matter what, each turn, unless multiple cards are being destroyed. So if you have two charges up and you get Torrential Tributed, uh, if you get Mirror Force, you do get to add back two monsters because they're both destroyed in the same chain. Um, so just remember that. A lot of people do forget that. I've noticed that uh, playing people online and such. Um, so <clears throat> another combo here is pretty much most most of the combos you want to have. Uh, you want to have the Dynamus Charge. Dynamus Charge is just like I find that if you don't get to this card as soon as possible, it's it's really bad. Um, Let's see here, what's the one I'm going to show you guys? So, uh, this this is one of my favorite combos actually in the deck. Um, it's just it's so good. Uh, so basically what happens is, let's say you have your Pendulum Scale set up, so we have a Rex in a Pendulum Scale, and we have a Terran in a Pendulum Scale. Um, the cool thing about this guy, Size N, is you can Pendulum summon him because he has level 4. That's the one thing I don't like about Nishipachi. Um, so the problem with Nishipachi, of course, is that... Uh, you know, if you draw him, he kind of sucks to draw because you do have to use your normal summon, which is unfortunately can be a problem from time to time. Um, that's why I feel like you only need two, and it's good to play two to three size ends. I bumped down to two again because I just feel like two is fine. Three was cloggy. And um, I think the thing with that is, is just to remember is that um, you want these in the deck unless it's the first synchro summon. Uh, so you can get draws off of the Barreto combos. It's really important to remember. Um, essentially what happens here is, uh, if you do open, like, basically these cards, so I'll just show you the combo. So you want to open this, this, it's a four card combo. A lot of the decks, are, um, plays in this deck are, like, four card combos, unfortunately. Um, 
but I mean, like this deck's just, it's really consistent. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter how it works out. You just want to draw a tuner and a charge. Like if you draw a tuner and a charge, you're like, you're good to go. So um, essentially what happens is you're going to like, say, draw these four cards. Uh, so you're like, right away, you know, you're like, okay, this is a really good turn one play because what happens with, with hands like this is if your opponent lets you go first and say you start off with, well, let's say we start off with uh, six cards. It doesn't matter, or five cards, sorry. It doesn't matter what the other card is at this point. Um, so we're just going to say that uh, this is the fifth card. doesn't matter. So we open this. Your opponent lets you go first. He has five cards. You have five cards. You're like, okay, well, I can play Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'm going to activate the Dynamis Charge. And you know you have a six and a three scale. But you want to, since you have the Rex, you know you're not going to want to pendulum that out because you can't synchro with the Sizan. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab something else that's level 4 so you can synchro with the Sizan. Um, this, is, this is what's so cool about this card is like in this combo you actually don't use your normal summon up until the second synchro, which is pretty sweet. So this is something else just to remember. So um, we're going to, we don't want to pendulum summon the Rex, so we're going to want to grab a uh, 3 scale because we're going to want to pendulum summon the Terran. So let's just grab a uh, Stegosaur. He's generally the, the scale 3 they'll put in the in this in that uh, pendulum zone because he doesn't really he's not like super super great. So um, essentially what's gonna happen here is you're going to uh, set up your scales. We're gonna put the three here, and we're gonna put the six here. Uh, we are then going to pendulum summon. So I always pendulum summon, of course, the size and in defense, and that's if your opponent like max sees you after this. You can just end your turn, which is okay. Because um, you don't want to start summoning uh, card curry synchros while your opponent has uh, a maxi activated because you're just going to be giving them too much advantage and at that point you're losing your advantage. So they maxi, they go minus, you're going to be starting the turn with five cards. You're still going to have one, two, three, four, five, one card in hand, six. So you're going to have the advantage. And if they do try to kill this card while in defense position, it does switch to attack and it can't be destroyed by battle. So that's really important to remember to always special this card in defense position if you can. Um, unless you have a plays where you have multiple card curries on the board, and you want to just like crash this into a monster first, and then all your card curry monsters will gain um, 800 attack and defense. So that can make your Barados and stuff big enough to get over Dark Destroyers and whatnot. So just remember the little, little things with Sizan. He is important in that sense. So we're all going to special summon these, Pendulum summon both these cards in uh, defense and attack. And then we're going to activate, or sorry, we're going to Synchro Summon. So this is going to go to the graveyard. I'm going to put the graveyard down here. And then this is going to go to the Pendulum Zone, so that's the Pendulum Zone there. I just want to make sure you guys can see that. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so this is the Pendulum Zone, that's the Graveyard. So we're going to Synchro Summon the Burrito. And his effect's going to activate, remember the Chain Link's how it works. This is Chain Link 2, this is Chain Link 1, since this is mandatory, this has to activate first. So this will resolve last since the mandatory effect. So this is going to resolve, and we're going to Special Summon. This is the really important part, don't forget this. We're going to Special Summon the Sizan from the deck in defense position. Now why this is important is because this card is going to activate now to add back the Terran, or it's going to resolve, I should say, to add back, oh, there's my food all finished. It's going to add back the Terran to your hand. So here's my hand here. And now if you guys remember, I haven't actually used my normal summon as of yet. So we're going to normal summon the Terran, and now we can synchro summon again. This is going to go back to the extra deck. This is going to go to the graveyard, the second size end. And we're going to make the second burrito. So uh, this is not going to go back to the hand again because of the charge, but I mean I'm going to have a pendulum play next turn to bring this out for free as long as my scales stay up, so that's really important to remember. Now at this point I started with the six card. So this is the six card in my hand. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have still at six, or we're still at the plus one, so we're still good, because this gave us the plus one. Um, so off of the second Bredo, this is where you're going to summon the Nishipachi. Now I like to always summon Nishipachi in defense position. Um, this is because while it's in attack position, uh, if your opponent does attack it, it switches to defense, but not vice versa. If your opponent will attack Nishipachi in defense position, you do not draw a card off of it um, because it will not switch to attack. It's one of the few card curries that actually doesn't switch either direction. It just switches just for the one. So if you special this in defense position and then activate its effect to switch it to attack, both of these are going to activate in a chain. So chain link one, chain link two, or chain link one, chain link two, doesn't matter. And then we're going to draw two more cards. So one... Two. So we now have three cards in our hand. We have one, two, three, four, five, six cards in the field. So we start off with five cards, and we have nine cards in total. So that, that's a plus four combo. And the cool thing about this is, I mean, if you want to, you could always just overlay these for a Felgrand if you want some more protection, say you didn't draw any traps. 
Um, or you could just leave these, and this is a lot of pressure for your opponent, um, mainly just because if they do want to get over these or get rid of your tuner, because next turn you could just pendulum this out and then synchro again. Um, the the biggest thing for them to do is is if they get don't get like rid of this uh, you know destruction or bouncing or whatever. Um, what ends up happening is if they attack this, and a lot of people are stupid and they do this, especially playing online. Although we all know some players that play online aren't very good. Uh, this will switch to defense during your opponent's turn, and you'll draw two more cards. So that's really important. to Remember, this is like the dex draw engine, and this is thinning into your combo pieces to get to more um, XYZ plays. Because the one thing I noticed with Dino Mess is that they don't really have a lot of speed in gaining advantage. So they can run a steam really fast. And that's why I didn't like the Cyber Dragon Infinity spam build, because you basically just blow your load turn one, um, trying to get to the Cyber Dragon Infinity, and then you have like very, very few recovery plays. And I just don't like that. The Karakuri build, I think, is better. Um, Mainly just for the fact that, uh, you know, you put these boards on the field that really intimidate your opponent. You're still drawing cards and gaining advantage, so it can keep up with faster decks like Monarch. And, um, of course, you still have your Pendulum plays to follow up once they waste resources to get rid of this. Because, I mean, like, if they Regeki this board, you're like, okay, that's cool. Um, so you wasted your one card, so you only had, um, uh, so now you're down to five cards because you Regeki. And I'm still at, let's say we didn't draw off of this, the Regeki first. I'm still at one two, three, four, five, six cards with the Pendulum, Terran, and the uh, extra deck. So, I mean, in that case, they're going to draw for six next, or draw for four next turn. Excuse me. And, I mean, then I can just do a huge Pendulum play. Stuff like that. So, I mean, you really never lose advantage because that whole play, you ended up still going plus, what did I say, plus four ends up being, because you start with five cards, you end with nine altogether. So, and I do count these as cards on the field. A lot of people are like, oh, Pendulum Zones don't count. In this deck, pendulums count because these pendulums are amazing and they negate targeting and destruction. So you can do like a huge pendulum play. Your opponent tries to bomb this, so you're just like, nope, I'm going to pop this back to my hand or to the extra deck and then back to my hand off of the charge instead. So once again, if you guys do see a combo where you open up, you basically just need to open a charge and a level four tuner. Um, plus, you need to open a three and a six scale. That's basically what you, what you want to open up with. So it is a four card combo, unfortunately, but you are going to see this fairly often because this card's at three, this card's at three, this card you can play at three, and this card's at three as well. So I mean, these are all cards that you can draw in multiples. Um, like I said, I'm just playing two size ends again. That was just to make room for uh, a little more effect negation, but um, overall, like, yeah, if you do open this combo, it's so good. Um, so one other combo I do want to show you guys, this is the last one. Um, I think everything else is just kind of like situational stuff. Um, but this is something I want to show you guys that a lot of people, this is just the Dino Mist one. Uh, a lot of people do forget about Dino Mist Rex. Okay, so let's say that I have a Dino Mist Rush set, right? So this is going to be, we'll just pretend it's set. And I do have a... Um, where the frick did my other Rexes go? Oh yeah, right, I was drawing fake cards. So let's say I have two Rexes on the board and another Dynamist. So a lot of people know those who play Dynamist, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, basically what ends, up, what ends up happening here is, I've mentioned this in my past deck profiles, if this card attacks an opponent's monster in the damage step, activates the effect to tribute a Dynamist card, and it still dies at the end of the damage step because it was uh, destroyed by battle, his effect will still resolve in the graveyard, um, which is pretty insane. So, like, if your opponent has, like, a Dark Destroyer or something you're having a hard time getting over, as long as you have Rex and another Dynamist card in the field, you can get over um, a lot of crazy, crazy boards that are giving you a hard time. So it's really important to remember. So this can really come to come to fruition through um, basically anything, um, with the Rush especially. I like it with Rush because if you bring out the Rex off of Rush, it's unaffected by card effects, so your opponent can't like book a Moon it or um, whatever else, it doesn't matter. Uh, another thing to remember is this guy can actually tribute face down Dynamis monsters. Um, I don't know why, but that's how it works on Dev Pro, at least for me. I, I don't know if that's the actual ruling, but I've noticed that like you basically just have to like reveal the monsters of Dynamis if it's set, and then it actually lets him tribute it. I could be wrong about that, like that Dev Pro does weird stuff, but it's let me do that before. So, um, but yeah, things to note about this card is like in, in positions like this, say you have this board out, you want to make sure you're attacking in the right the right order. Uh, I've seen people play in this deck before where they don't do that, and it's just it's just dumb. I don't get it. So like, say your opponent has a monster that's too big for Terran to run over. You want to just basically like tackle the first Rex, tribute this one, 
And then you're going to, like, I see so many people activate the double attack piercing. It's not that good. Like, I rarely ever do the double attack piercing. Like, like this is the better combo to tribute the monster and bounce a card in the field of the hand because it doesn't target. So you can just get rid of set back rows. They can't chain it. Um, it's basically a moral attack. Like, that's what this card is. It's moral attack on set or, or on any card in the field, but it sends it back to the deck, which is just crazy. Or hand, I should say. Um... So you always want to make sure that if you have three Dynamists that you're basically going to tribute the first little one, you're going to get rid of a card in the field of the hand, and then you're going to attack with the second Dino or Rex to send the other one to the extra deck, and then that's going to get rid of another card. Now you want to make sure that off the second one you're tributing off like the Rex as well that you sent or you specialed off of the, the Rush. I've seen a lot of people as well in dual videos and stuff. Um, that they'll like summon the Rex and then they'll tribute the other one off or attack with this one first And then this one's just gonna die in the end phase and you left your board wide open So like leaving a 2500 Rex in the field is still really good Like it's something your opponent has to get rid of and if you have scale on the board like a three scale Which you probably did because you had a pendulum summon on those um, He's protected by battle and destruction and stuff so um, Anyways guys, that's pretty much the main combos for this deck um, There isn't really a whole lot others. It's kind of just like I said situational um, if you are playing, one thing I will note is if you are playing, uh, Manko like I am, um, and you are playing triple Sizan, if you do open Sizan Manko, um, there is actually a combo to make triple Burrito, but you do require, it's quite a hefty hand, um, I mean, I could show you guys, but it's basically like the same thing with the other combo, where you just open, like, it's, it's the exact same thing where you open a six scale, a three scale, a charge, and a... Scale. So it's basically just one extra card. The only problem with this combo is it does require your opponent to attack and not have any back rows. Because basically what you're going to do is you like, this is just a quick one, but you're basically just going to like, you know, special the main cone attack. It's going to switch all their monsters to defense. You're going to play the charge and then you're going to activate like whatever, it doesn't matter. We'll say it's, uh, I guess it has to be another uh, four scale, three scale. We'll just say we add another, another Terran. Um, so we'll activate the three scale, activate the six scale, and then you pendulum summon these, and then you're gonna synchro summon with this first for the first burrito. These go to the sorry, that's the extra deck. These go to the graveyard. Get a burrito. Burrito activates. Um, gets the watchdog. You're then going to synchro. I mean, this works as well if you're not playing two size ends. It's just not. You're gonna end with a, a beret, two burritos, and uh, a. Um, uh, Nishipachi instead. So if you you are playing triple sides and you can actually do a triple burrito play, which is I think better. But I mean that's that's the risk of course of playing triple sides and that you have a chance of like opening with two of them, which is just so bad. Um, so yeah, basically you're gonna synchro with that, and this is just the same combo you guys remember from before, where this goes back to the extra deck, this goes back to your hand, uh, this hits the board. You haven't normal summoned yet, so you can normal summon this because there's a Nishipachi on the board. Um, you could have already drawn the two cards as well if you wanted to. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Or you could just like summon this and you could switch the switch the Terran kind of thing. Or sorry, that wouldn't work. You could switch their monster sort of thing. Um, and then you can make the beret. This goes back to the extract. It goes to the graveyard. You get the third Nishipachi. You make beret and you have it. So I mean, like you know, the 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 um, cool thing about that is that the the Manko essentially allows you to stop yourself from being OTK, which I found I was getting killed a lot with this deck. And it gives you one more level 4 machine monster to further your plays with, which is really, really nice. So anyways, guys, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully it was uh, worth the wait. Sorry if it was a little unorganized. Um, but really, there's just like, how many combos did I main off? Uh, I think there's like f three or four main card creep combos. It's very, very basic. You just kind of have to know like how the chain links work with this card and this card and things like that. And other than that, that's pretty much like the, the basic... Um, basic way to play the deck. Uh, so yeah, let's get this video up to 50 likes and I will have a uh, Blacklister Soldier Ritual deck profile for you guys. That deck's a lot of fun. I really like my build. I've tested it a ton and I think it's really, really, uh, really, really good. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.